Adam Soltani is with us now. He's the executive director of the Oklahoma chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations, a Muslim American advocacy group. Adam, I appreciate you joining us and bringing a bit of clarity to this conversation, which is much needed at this time. Some communities across the country are intense because of the Israel Hamas war. Give me a sense of what you've seen where you are and how you're positioning yourself to help Muslims and non-Muslims understand this conflict. Well, thank you so much for having me. Uh, indeed, this is a very challenging time, not just for Muslims in America and, and people in general, but for our world, uh, because there's a lot at stake as far as peace, justice, and the future of people in, in a region of the world that is vital to our history. That being said, uh, in Oklahoma, we're seeing a lot of concerns from the Muslim community, which consists of a, a good majority of Palestinians, people who have family and relatives there. I myself have a friend there whose entire house was destroyed in Gaza, and she was buried under the rubble only to be rescued by by some aid workers who transported her to a hospital where she had to have surgery, and she's still there. So what we're trying to do is our best to educate people on the reality that this is not something that just happened overnight, but this is a conflict that has been going on for more than seven decades. There's a lot to the history, and it's complex and complicated. It's definitely, definitely not a religious war, but rather it is an issue related to the land of a people that they feel has been stolen from them over the period of more than 75 years, very similar to what we've seen here in America in regards to the loss of land and culture of the indigenous people. Yeah. I want to focus, if we can, for just a moment uh, on a place where a lot of these very tense discussions are happening, and that's college campuses. Uh, just today, Florida called for pro-Palestinian groups to disband because they were, according to Florida University officials, aligned with a terrorist organization. This is on top of some demonstrators being pegged as anti-Semites and others, other demonstrations openly praising Hamas for their attack. What are your thoughts here and where does this lead? That's a good question. Um, I think we need to clarify that to be pro-Palestinian is not to be anti-Semitic. And although we recognize that there is a large population of followers of the Jewish faith in Israel, it doesn't mean that if you oppose the actions of the Israeli government that you are automatically anti-Semitic. And that's very problematic in and of itself. What I think we need to see is a protection of the First Amendment rights of all American citizens, and particularly, as you noted, those whose rights are being violated by not allowing them to uh, promote their views on the support of the Palestinian people. In my conversations with people in Oklahoma, as well as people across the country, I'm seeing concerns, an outpouring of concern, I should say, for Palestinian human rights. It's not about supporting violence. It's not about supporting anything that anyone would, would find mm -hmm. problematic, but it's about you know, recognizing the fact that there are Palestinian people who are suffering at the hands of violence from a government that is far more powerful than the Palestinian people are and have been for quite some time. Well, Adam, let me ask this because you, you say what I've seen is, you know, concern for human rights when it comes to Palestinians. Um, one of the things that I've been thinking about just over the last few weeks, you know, had these discussions about Israel and Hamas been dominated by the loudest voices in the room? And if so, you know, what's your priority as this conflict drags on and as these discussions, you know, continue to to happen with some of the most extreme voices, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting a lot of attention here. Yeah, I, I think that is really the issue. And it's not just in regards to this current conflict. Uh, we live in a very polarizing society where people with uh, views on one extreme or the other tend to get the attention of, of the media. Uh, they get the political attention, you know, they get the public's attention. But I think what I'm seeing, because I work on the grassroots, is that people want to see an end to violence. They want to see peace in our world. And 
when you talk to people about the reality of the history of what's gone on, you know, in the area of Israel and Palestine, and what, you know, the Palestinian people have been through, you find that people objectively want to find ways to create peace for both Israelis and Palestinians, and all they want to see is an end to the war. The young woman who's a friend of mine who's in Gaza, who ended up in the hospital after her family's entire house was destroyed, those were her exact words to me. After facing near death, all she cared about was an end to war, an end to bloodshed, and an end to violence. And I think that's what we're missing out on. Everyone wants to talk about we support Israel, we support Palestine. How about supporting an end to war and the promotion of the right for every human being to live a life free of violence? Adam, there's a fear that violence overseas will lead to violence stateside. We've seen some of that. A Muslim boy in Chicago has been killed. A Jewish leader has been killed, although police have disputed the motivation for her killing. The DHS warns of a heightened threat environment in the U.S. as this war goes on. As the conflict is still happening, what's the solution here stateside in turning the temperature down? I think the only possible solution is that we as Americans, people of different faith and cultural backgrounds, different races and ethnicities, we put our differences aside and we agree to disagree on certain issues but we come together in the name of peace and unity with the hope of being able to provide solutions for friends, family members, and perhaps religious brethren overseas if we can play a role in that. A good example would be yesterday uh, in front of the uh, Oklahoma City Council, uh, a rabbi and an imam, spiritual leaders from the Jewish and Muslim community came together and spoke out in unity and spoke against Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, xenophobia, and hate-based violence. In my opinion, that's the only way we can protect ourselves here in America and protect our religious diversity and pluralism. Adam, I appreciate the time. We know that there are a lot of complicated and complex feelings around this topic and around uh, this conflict, but I appreciate you joining us for a little bit to chat just to, just for a moment. Um, so thank you for your time and we appreciate having you.